that is the score. Maryland by three with 25 seconds left. And I say, if it happens, John, I've seen some miracles here last year where, when they beat Virginia two years ago, rather, when Ralph Sampson played here with a lead down the stretch. So really, don't count them out until that buzzer really blows. Hale has four fouls. And with 23 seconds left, you have to put them at the line. That's the Valvano method. Put him on a free throw line. Let him prove that he can beat you on that foul line and stop the clock. Lecter Drizel, in his last trip to Carmichael, would like nothing better than to go away with his third victory. They're rotating Martin on the floor offensively and defensively. They're getting him on for offensive for rebounding. There's the rebound. 20 seconds left. Smith with a jumper. Good. North Carolina takes timeout. 16 seconds remaining. With timeout. 72-71 is the score. We're not done yet. We still have 16 seconds to play. The Tar Heels down by a First of all, John, immediately they're going to put pressure on, try to make that trap, try to make that steal, but then they have to foul immediately. The guy they would like to foul, I believe, is Atkins, but Lefty empties him out. Lefty gets Atkins away from the ball because Atkins is shooting 50% on a free throw line. Good move by Lefty to get Atkins up the floor. Steve Hale is fouled out of the game. He'll sit down with 15 seconds left, 12 points to his total. Dean Smith shuffling players in and out. So much coaching going on on the floor by both guys, rotating people on the floor, making sure that you go to your strengths, not your weaknesses. He knows Atkins is a ball handler, but is not a good free throw shooter. So Lefty rotates him up the court for possibly the long pass. And in Carolina situation, they can't make the steal, so they immediately have to foul and Fortunately for Dean, he loses one of his clutch players, Steve Hill. And Ranzino Smith, the rookie, is at the scorer's table, ready to come in. He's had a conversation with Dean Smith, which continues. They're going to put Branch on the foul line. He is 3 of 5 tonight from the foul line, has 21 points in the game. Also four rebounds for Adrian Branch. Now, Lefty Drizel knows the situation. 15 seconds to play. It's all right now in the hands of Adrian Branch. Branch is shooting 77% for the year. He's been in situations like this, but I don't care how many times you do it, John. It is a moment of just your stomach. Get out the mailbox. First one won't go. North Carolina has the ball and a chance. 12 seconds left. Peterson in the corner. The pops and his jumper with eight seconds to go. It hits. They rotate the ball, they swing at the pops, and he hits the open jumper. Five seconds remaining. It's North Carolina by one, 73-72. We'll be back. Lead when Thompson hit the shot, but they had timeouts remaining, did not take them to set up anything. Why, Dick? I've seen D do that a number of times. He figures if you can get the quick shot out of your flow, rather than pulling timeout, allowing the team to set up defensively against you, why not take it? And they got the great shot, and it goes down. And here we're seeing a lot of strategy now. Now he goes the timeout to want to see what he's going to do defensively against Maryland. So North Carolina now has one timeout remaining. Maryland has one timeout remaining. It's North Carolina by one, 73-72 with five seconds left. And it was Dave Thompson who started tonight for Joe Wolf, who got the basket to put North Carolina ahead. It looked like Lefty was going to stroll out of here with that win. But you called it, Dick. You said, you never know in this building. I've been here a number of times, and I've seen this happen. It doesn't shock me one bit. First of all, he's got kids that really know how to play in pressure situations. They work on it. If you were to watch them to practice, John, they work on special situations, almost like an NFL football team who runs their two-minute drills. These kids are geared for spots like this. Now we have to think about offensively what we will see out of Maryland. Maryland most likely would love to get the ball in Gatlin's hands for him to run it up the court and get it possibly to Branch or to Bias. It has been five years, January of 1980, since Maryland has won here in Carmichael Auditorium. They defeated North Carolina 92-86 to on that night, but that's been it. I look for Carolina to go full court. Yeah, they're going full court right now just to make it a little tougher to get the ball up the court. Oh, what a breakdown. What a breakdown on inbounds of the basketball. Still have four seconds remaining in the game. The foul goes on Atkins. 
Hunter came up with a steal. Actually, Dixon threw the ball right to him. He didn't really have to do much. What really happened on a baseline, John, as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't believe that he can move. He can run that baseline after a score. He thought that he had to throw the ball from a set position because the official handed him the basketball. But after a score in college basketball, you can run that baseline, or in the NBA also. You can run after a score. Well, he was actually kind of screened off from the defensive man, didn't see him. Hunter knocks it home. Mer Maryland loses this. This is absolutely heartbreak city for that guy right there. They had this game in the clutch of their hands, and this would be another steal for this guy. I mean, absolutely stealing a W. Four seconds left. It's 74-72 Carolina. This crowd, will, tell you. this crowd will never allow him to quit either. I mean, this crowd is into the game right from out of the gate. People in Chapel Hill. I mean, I love coming to Chapel Hill. The whole area is just beautiful here down at Tobacco Road. Hunter has seven. The lead is three at 75-72. Hudson with 14 points. Brad Doherty fouled out with 14. Steve Hale had 12 tonight. Kenny Smith still out there with nine. But...